Speaker, the ministry is apparently deeply disappointed about community legal clinics advertising for unpaid articling positions due to lack of funding. Speaker, articling students have already graduated. They must article for a year to become fully licensed lawyers. Many have families to support and are carrying huge debt loads. Students who want to gain experience representing disadvantaged and marginalized legal aid cl clients will not be able to afford to work for free. What is the minister's plan to ensure that articling students are not forced to take unpaid work in order to practice law? Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the honourable member for that very important question. Uh, it doesn't matter what your job title or, or your position is. If you perform work for somebody in the province of Ontario, you're covered by the Employment Standards Act and you deserve to be paid. There's a very narrow exemption that exists, Speaker, for co-op students, trainees, and the self-employed. The, the exemption is also for accredited university and college programs to give their students valuable workplace experience while they pursue their degree. Now, these rules have been on the books for, uh, for many years, and we've, we've been very active in terms of increasing people's awareness. The, uh, the member spoke about my, uh, my disappointment when I heard this new speaker, and I share that disappointment with her as well. Um, it is legal currently for student at law Answer. to work, but it's deeply, deeply disappointing when any law office or legal aid clinic or otherwise chooses not to pay a student who accepts an articling position, especially when it's a 10-month full-time job speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, access to justice is fundamental to a functioning democracy. It's critical that the justice system includes lawyers who represent the diversity of our province, which is why articling positions have always been paid. The rise in unpaid articling positions creates barriers to people from low-income and often racialized backgrounds to becoming lawyers. What will the minister do about the current Employment Standards Act ex exemptions that exclude law students and some other professionals from the minimum wage provisions of the Act? Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you once again to uh, the member for that excellent supplementary. It's an issue I think we all need to turn our attention to. I can tell you what we do, Speaker, at the province of Ontario. All articling students that work in the legal services branch of every government of Ontario ministry are paid as they should be, Speaker. So certainly we're setting the example. Minimum wage, wage laws are very important to employment standards protections. They ensure that individuals are not exploited and they're paid for the work they, in, they indeed do. Here at the province of Ontario at the ministries, as I said, Speaker, we pay each and every one of the articling students the, uh, the money they're entitled to. In this case, what we have, Speaker, before us and what I'm turning my attention to is there currently is a regulatory exemption that predates our government. The ministry will be reaching out to colleagues in the field, in the legal field, through the other ministries. Answer to uh, ensure that we begin a discussion on this regulatory exemption as it exists today, Speaker. Thank you.